one, why did you choose directing as a career path in the arts? Not sure I chose it. I feel like it chose me in a sense that I was in youth theatre and I was um, performing, I was acting. I, I was quite a nightmare to direct. So I'd be on stage telling everyone else what they should be doing, as well as me like not taking a note from a director and being like, I need to be standing here. I should look over there. I should do this. And the director at the time, he said, I reckon you might be good at directing. And so it just felt like everything was saying that that's something I should pursue. Question two, how did you come to work with Arch468 and what was the project? Project called Her Story. It was a citywide audio storytelling project and it was an amazing project that um, told women's stories of the pandemic and really a way for people to kind of for there to be a documentation of what women went through during that time and for people to feel kind of less alone in. Question number three, what's been an important or formative moment for you in your career? It's got to be when I first worked with Payne's Plough. So I originally started off as a producer of a show called Estate Walls, a reading of it, written by Renze Kenny at the Young Vic. And I was like, this has to go on. Renze was an associate artist at um, playwright at Payne's Plough at the time and so they supported me to produce that play and um, and then I was like actually I'm really interested in, in directing I don't know if you know that oh, brilliant why don't you assist James Grieve on um, a play called Wasted by Kay Tempest and it really was the very beginnings of my relationship to new writing and and developing as an artist I spent eight years with them I was able to assist and um, then became associate director there and was able to then craft and make my own work and 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 figure out who whose stories I wanted to support telling and question number four what is one piece of advice that you wish someone gave you when you were starting out even if people don't sound like you you deserve to be here the first me kind of really realizing that not everyone come from the same class background as myself pick up space and to do that like you deserve to be there so like yeah I wish someone said that to me you deserve to be here um mm -hmm. so fuck shit up basically question number five what do you want the art scene to look like in five years time I want it to feel less elite I want it to be less elite I want there to be rep better representation across the board, like from from the artists that people engage with to the stories that we tell to the staff that are employed to the boards to the trustees, like at all levels. And I, I, we're on a journey with it. We're getting better, but nowhere near where where we need to be um, to make better steps on on how we can break down the barriers that exist for people to access theatre. All right, last question then. Um, what are you working on at the moment? It doesn't have to be arts related or it can be, just what you're up to. But I've recently moved to Bristol and um, I'm really keen to figure out what new writing looks like in Bristol and how um, I can support and develop the next generation of new, new writers here. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I've written a play. <gasps> I know, oh. I know. I've written a play. I've, it's the first thing I've ever written and I've worked with some of the most like incredible new writers that our country has. Mm -hmm. And so there's there's always this little voice that I'm really doing my best to shut down to be like, how dare you write when you've worked with some of the greatest? And, <laughs> um, <laughs> and I'm trying to switch that off and go, actually, I've got, I've got a few stories to tell. And so much, Steph. It is always just the dream to chat and catch up with you. Later, so. Lots of love. Take care. Bye. Yeah, big love. Day.